Welcome to our special masterclass, The Five Secrets to an Amazing Sex in a Long-Term Relationship. I am so incredibly excited to be here with you this evening for me, maybe morning for you or afternoon for you. Maybe you're watching or going to watch on replay, so it will be at some stage throughout your day or weekend. And I'm really, really excited to spend this next 30 to 45 minutes with you diving into literally a blueprint of healing your bedroom affairs or bedroom pain from inside out because it is time for you to claim the connection, love and intimacy you deeply, deeply desire with your partner or with your husband. Hi, Laura. Hi, gorgeous. Welcome, Divine Woman. So excited to have you here with me today. So as we are diving in, I will be taking your questions as I am sharing these secrets with you and really, really unraveling this profoundly healing process that will absolutely shift a possible lot of pain, struggling and isolation and take you and your darling into a place of deep, deep love and soul nourishing intimacy. So you're very welcome to ask me questions as we go along. I will do my level best to answer every single one of them. And if something, you know, misses my eye or you're watching things on replay, please know that I'll be coming to this class throughout next uh, 24 to 48 hours. So you, I'll be absolutely be addressing your question later on. But truly your engagement and your participation will allow me to serve you in the most exquisite and beautiful way. And for you to really, really understand the, the ins and outs of this topic and of this piece that I'm not going to lie, it's a big pain and it's a big source of suffering for so many relationships and for so many marriages. And as someone, hi Kaz, hi gorgeous woman, lovely to see you, beautiful. And, and as someone who bought, uh, has been in relationship, I literally have been in a committed relationship since I'm 16. I know nothing about the single life. I know nothing about dating, but I'm 37 now. So I have been uh, over 21 years. I have been in two committed relationships. So I know a hell lot about what does it take to marriage work? What does it take to uh, keep the fire alive? And subsequently, I have studied this topic on a very, very deep level. And now I'm supporting my clients and amazing students from all around the world around this topic. Hi, Tressa. Hi, Gorgeous. Uh, that seems to be many times a taboo and many times really, really source of deep shame and pain and suffering. Uh, and I strongly feel and I strongly believe that even when, you know, people are kind of at the end of the rope and they are looking for help and answer in their best attempt, they go to place like counseling or psychotherapy, which is excellent. Counseling or psychotherapy is excellent for, you know, solving your arguments or your communication challenges or things like not feeling loved or seen, but no amount of psychotherapy or counseling is going to really address your difficulties inside of bedroom because psychotherapists don't deal with human sexuality. Counseling does not have the skills, the tools, the guidance to actually make women orgasmic or help women heal sexual pain or really liberate woman's sexual trauma from her reproductive system so she can feel safe opening her body to her partner and to her husband. And this is where I feel where my I work and really, really the way I am there for my clients, but in profoundly safe and loving and gentle way. And subsequently the guide and the mentor they wish they had 20 years ago to really learn about the ins and outs of their body and bring in tools and skills into their relationship that completely transform the essence of how they relate to their partner, how they feel about a partner and help heal, you know, deep, deep blocks and sources of pain that normally might be just like sitting there and eating the essence of your marriage or of your relationship alive. Hi, Tulsi. Hi, gorgeous. Welcome, woman. 
I hope I have your name right. If not, definitely let me know. All right, so allow us to dive right in. I'm so excited to dive into this juicy topic. And um, as I will be revealing these powerful five secrets with you, I'm going to offer a little bit of premise. These five secrets have nothing to do about the pieces you might read in Vogue or Cosmopolitan. This is not about giving you the skills to give a better blow job or hand job to your, to your partner, to your husband. This is not a skill based. Uh, I can teach you skills all day long. And, you know, obviously there is tremendous value in knowing how to touch your partner or bring you, give your partner pleasure and all of that. But no amount of skills or no amount of tools will ever solve the drama of your bedroom if you're actually not addressing the deeper psycho-emotional pieces that, you know, might be preventing you in the first place to be easy even like having desire to learn a new skill or having like the drive to maybe, uh, you know, treat your uh, partner sexuality as sacred and beautiful. So what I'm going to be sharing with you and what I'll be teaching you today is something and really looking at healing your sexuality and like keeping sex and passion intimacy alive through lenses of deep understanding of trauma, deep understanding of sexual depression, deep understanding of the impact of childhood wounding and our societal conditioning and what it really, really does in um, like your experience with your partner and truly how you can break free of these challenges and difficulties and absolutely reclaim this soul nourishing connection with your husband. Hi, Dominique. So lovely to have you here with me today. So let us dive right in. The secret number one for keeping your sex alive and amazing in long-term relationship is you activating your pleasure. You activating your pleasure. I'm talking to you as a woman. And what that means is first and foremost, you gotta learn the ins and outs of the tempo of your body. I cannot tell you the amount of women that are literally, you know, constantly projecting the needs for pleasure or like the, the need to satisfy the desire for orgasm onto their partner right? So it's only my partner who is responsible for my orgasm. Only my partner who's responsible for my turn on. Only my partner who needs to like, you know, activate in me and aliven me. And there is nothing wrong with, of course, you and your partner having sexy, lusty, beautiful time. But at the end of the day, if you're constantly projecting your need for orgasm onto your partner, it creates this disempowering habitual narrative that literally is source of so much arguments and friction and shaming and judgment and criticism that no man wants to have on his love list. No man wants to be constantly like feeling not good enough because he is not, uh, you know, meeting you where you want to be met. You, my darling friend, are responsible for your pleasure. You are responsible for turning yourself on. You are responsible for activating your body. You are the one who has the body. So it's really time to start inviting exploration and curiosity and self-love and like this sensual erotic awakening inside of you because once again, it's not your partner, it's you. And as I'm saying all of this, of course, I understand that there are so many layers to this. I mean, you might be a woman who said, but true, might have had traumatic childbirth that has really damaged and maybe even ruptured your cervix. I know this has been my case. Two years ago, my cervix was literally in pieces. And even though I have the tools and skills, it took me, I would say, a solid eight months, I would eight to nine months 
of deep sexual healing work to actually move away from place of, you know, first it was just uh, overwhelming pain. Then I eventually built to like, you know, subtle uh, discomfort. Then I went into some level of numbness and then slowly, 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 I was rebuilding my pleasure. So if you are in a place where you struggle with things like vulvodynia or vaginismus or cervicitis or maybe uh, urethral pain or pudental neuralgia, like a lot of, of these sexual health issues, of course, I am not saying that, you know, uh, like I'm saying this in a lenses that that is a deep healing that is required in your body in order for you to actually like reclaim the nervous system of pleasure. But simultaneously, there are a lot of women who, um, perhaps have just like are disconnected from their body or they are getting a lot of shame around uh, masturbation or they are getting a lot of shame about their body altogether. And in that space, they create this chronic, chronic, chronic subtle projection onto their partner, which is eating alive the essence of sexual connection and sexual intimacy. So when it comes to activating your pleasure, you have permission to read erotica. You have permission to uh, do JDAC practices, which are some of the best practices on the planet to really like rebuild sensual, uh, uh, sexual erotic connection and awaken nerve endings that might have been like living dormant inside of your body and really be uh, allowing a free flow of energy that literally takes a uh, possible like disconnect, a numbness, lack of sensitivity, and actually start activating the pathways of your pleasure from inside out. Even if you are post-birth, even if you're premenopausal, even if you're menopausal, even if you're postmenopausal, even if you just had abortion or miscarriage, it is absolutely doable and it changes how you feel about yourself and what you hold true as a woman about your body and about your sexuality. Hi, Teresa. So lovely to have you here with me today, gorgeous woman. And all of this takes me to the secret number two. This is huge, man. You gotta start healing your intimacy blocks. You gotta start healing your intimacy blocks. So I'm just working with an amazing, amazing client. She's in her in her early 40s and uh, she's gorgeous, beautiful, talented young woman. And she's in relationship with a man, a bit of partner that she deep, deeply cares about. They want to start having a family. They want to have a children. And there's a huge pain around intimacy. There's a huge, huge, huge fear around like fully feeling safe to receive and open her body and be seen in the fullness of who she is. And um, what we are doing together is actually healing her intimacy blocks at the level of her nervous system, at the level of her body, so her body and her subconscious can actually feel deeply, deeply safe around receiving the love and connection and goodness from her partner, which of course will allow her body and the two of them step into pregnancy and uh, being a parent and truly building their happily ever after. I cannot tell you how much unresolved intimacy blocks are eating people alive. People are avoiding bedroom at the core the real pain, the real struggle is I'm terrified of intimacy. So let's say if you have had sexual trauma that has not been healed and integrated, at the end of the day is really the fear of intimacy that, uh, or shall I say, is the unprocessed trauma that is creating so much bodily response that you're perceiving as fear of intimacy, there's literally shutting your body when your partner is trying to, um, you know, connect with you or reach out to you or maybe like 
he caresses your breast and you get all pushy and like snappy, right? It is a fear of intimacy. And fear of intimacy is what's destroying so many amazing relationships or so many relationships that have such an incredible potential to create something powerful and meaningful together. And I'm really inviting you to start thinking for yourself and start really perceiving for yourself, like how are my fears of intimacy? How are my fears of truly connecting with my partner? Maybe your partner has, has his own fears, very likely. He might be also terrified of deep, deep intimacy. So there is like the two of you that love each other. And at the same time, you might be so starved for real connection because you have just like these massive, massive blocks. And it's truly time for you to start healing it and start shifting this. Because if you want, chances are that there'll be more and more erosion in your relationship. There'll be more and more disconnect. There'll be more and more distancing and separation. And I believe we are like two months away from stepping into a new decade, a new decade of our life, right? 2020, new decade. And it is time for you to step into the new decade of this life, which your partner to truly healing this from inside out and reclaiming this soul nourishing intimacy that every single one of us, like every single human is so deeply, deeply hungry for. So Teresa says, I found it very difficult to have the conversation with my husband. Yes. So this takes me to, I, I will be there. This is a, this is one of the secrets. So uh, we, we are going to dive, you know, conversation hundred percent. So all of this takes me to secret number three. You ready for this? This is about creating a healthy container for sexual experiences. So when you are owning your pleasure, you're healing your intimacy blocks, you are ready to reach out to your partner, to say to you, invite your partner to maybe be like the initiatress and say, hey, like, let's have, let's start having, uh, let's actually build container for healthy sexual experiences. And do you see the difference? Do you hear the difference? This is not about, hey, let's go to bedroom and let's have sex, which of course can happen, that's awesome. But like, let's have a container together as a couple to have healthy sexual experiences, right? So what does that mean? That means first and foremost that the two of us are really acknowledging that we are sexual beings and sexuality is a major component of our relationship as children, as finances, as our jobs, as, you know, uh, watching rugby uh, together anytime a World Cup is going on, like whatever the thing is, like sexuality is aspect of our relationship and we're not gonna forget about it we're not gonna not talk about it we're not gonna say hey honey you know six months from now and whatever it is like we are creating a container for sexual experiences and sexual experiences they themselves have such a wide variety of flavors most people think about sex like you know my man is gonna have erection and we're gonna have intercourse and he's gonna have an orgasm and in like 15 minutes like boom done and dusted and where really people are missing out where women are so much missing out is definitely that is a massive shortcoming from men to activate their body and like really really treat their body as a temple and you know even think about penetration in the first place when when your body is like open and turn on and just like so ready for your husband so ready for your partner right like you genuinely like with your body you're craving to have him inside of you and in all of this you know a uh, sexual experience can look like the two of you lying naked and literally breathing belly to belly or chest to chest and looking into each other's eyes and experiencing the level of intimacy and connection that maybe intercourse has not given you in the last two years. 
the biggest pain that I see for couples is that when sex goes out of window or, you know, just happens like two to three times a year or what have you, is they stop having intimacy. They stop having a body to body connection. They stop really looking into each other's eyes. So you have these two people who said yes to one another, whether that's in wedlock or, you know, being prohibited and but still saying yes to each other, right? So starved for intimacy, so starved for connection, so isolated and alone and feeling like this sometimes when scum back on the planet because like I have a man and I don't feel loved. I have a man and I feel so alone. I have a man and I just like, I feel invisible. I don't feel seen. I don't feel appreciated. And guess what? Then we are crumbling apart. We are falling apart. I've had a client uh, back in January, February, gorgeous, gorgeous woman in her 50s. And she actually lives in a sexless marriage. Um, she was, the sexlessness is coming from her partner, it's coming from her husband. And uh, she desperately wanted her partner. She desperately wanted to connect, but she basically it was like a massive, massive wall between them. And what started to happen for her, not only she felt, you know, lonely, untouched, isolated, unloved, unlovable, but literally she started to experience like all bunch of autoimmune diseases, uh, problems with thyroid, problems with her gut, problems with her enteric nervous system. And there's a body of research now that says that the isolation, alienation and feeling uh, like at the core that our needs for connection are not met it's actually creating a massive immune response in the body and creating all sort of physiological responses and health issues that people are really, really struggling. There's an amazing body of work from uh, Gabor Mate and his incredible book called the, When Body Says No, that talks a lot about it, about really that psycho-emotional space and the impact on our immune system, the impact on our endocrine system. So I have now woman after woman that is working with me. There's like, I have these issues, I have these issues, I have thyroid, I have um, adrenal issues, I have, you know, endometriosis, I have, you know, massive bubble problems, on and on and on. And like when we are stripping away, like really looking at the core, what is happening over and over again is, I don't feel loved. I feel lonely. I feel sad. I feel isolated. There's like, I could if I start to cry, if I really let myself to cry, if I really let myself to feel the grief, I think I'm going to just fall apart, just fall apart. So I am really, really inviting you to start taking these things seriously. This is not just like quickie orgasm and little connection here and there. This is a real stuff. You are meant to connect. You are meant to be together. You are meant to feel loved. You are meant to receive love. You are meant to be body to body, soul to soul, and really be witnessed and felt in all of you, right? Which takes me to secret number four. And Tressa is asked, like saying this, I found it difficult to have conversation with my husband. You gotta communicate with confidence and power. You gotta communicate with confidence and power. What does this mean? Well, first and foremost, most people don't talk about sex. Let's be honest here. People talk about money. Money itself is a very charged topic, right? But people talk about weather and kids and in-laws and politics and all sort of things, stuff, but people would not talk about sex. It's such a charged topic. It's such a difficult topic. Like most couples that come to me is like, how do we even approach talking about sex? Like I feel so icky and uncomfortable and I am terrified to really ask for what I want or say my partner to slow down. Now, all of this boils down to two things. The first and foremost, you gotta have skills. You gotta have a communication skills 
to know how to approach your partner, how to, instead of demanding things, you gotta invite him. You gotta know how to inspire the fuck out of your partner, out of your husband, so he is on the same plane with you. It's not like, I am the one who's trying to fix everything, but it's like, we are in this together. This is a big part of my journey. Like I had to learn how to really initiate my husband to be the partner I want him to be. I had to be the one who learns the like the communication frameworks that literally trigger his basic human needs, like need for control, like need for connection, like need for competency, right? And through uh, being very deliberate, how I approach things that I want to shift or change or navigate in our relationship, I am inviting him to collaborate. I'm inviting him to cooperate. I'm not demanding. I'm not shaming. I'm not criticizing. I'm not condescending. I am inviting him to be activated. And guess what? When I learned this, it transformed my marriage. It transformed our sex life. It transformed how he sees me, how he treats me, how he connects with me. But what did it take for me? It took for me to learn those skills, learn those skills of communication that truly allow me to be deliberate, communicate with confidence and power to actually invite him to be the best version of himself. So the truth is when you have the skills and you are deliberate and you're planning, sometimes especially when the topic is sensitive or uh, it might be bringing up maybe piece of trauma or unworthiness or certain wounding or maybe in uh, you had experienced certain anger or like certain response from your partner, it can be charged topic. That's where preparation, being really deliberate comes in. And subsequently, you and your partner go to have practices, communication practices together that allow you to build a safe container where you can express all of who you are without judgment, without shame, without criticism, and be fully seen and fully, fully received in your pain, in your beauty, in your love, in your desire, in your fear. And it is truly that space, like when you as woman, you feel safe to express to your partner anything and everything, it creates that psycho-emotional safety, even somatic safety, even body safety, that for most of us women who have had sexual trauma, who have been exploited and violated, it truly is the doorway into our sexuality. It is a doorway into feeling open and receptive and like really, really being in this nervous system sing with our partner. And then, you know, he reaches out and it's like, wow, like you're so open and so receptive. So you truly go to learn the skills. You go to learn what it takes to invite your partner to, for the two of you, to co-create something amazing together. Which takes me to secret number five. And that is, you gotta explore new erotic terrain. You gotta explore new erotic terrain. I think one of the biggest pieces that, you know, people stop having sex or people's sex life just dies altogether. And that's true, not only for average couple, that's true for even ambitious women, successful women, um, you know, women who are uh, in leadership positions, women who are like CEOs and entrepreneurs and media stars, like every freaking couple is suffering in their sexuality. And so much of that boils down to, you know, once the six to 12 months mark passes, right? You know your partner's body from inside out. He knows your body from inside out. It's like things become so predictable. Things become so like boom, 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 boom. Over and over again, women tell me, I don't want to have sex because now I know exactly it is erection, uh, intercourse, 
his orgasm, boom, right? My body is not being brought on board, which takes me to back to secret one. You gotta activate your pleasure, right? Takes me back to secret number four. You gotta communicate with clarity and power and confidence what you desire, what you don't desire, what you want, what you don't want. You gotta initiate your partner into creating something powerful and meaningful and exquisite together. And then the two of you can really go on a terrain of exploration. I personally love tantric sex. I think tantric sex outside of, you know, all of this media bullshit around, you know, we can have sex for eight, 10, 12 hours, right? Stink made it very, very popular. And that is value to it. That is something really, really special to it. But at the end of the day, I think one of the big promise of tantric sex is the sacred sexuality. It's really that creating with your partner, like entering with your partner in the states of union and divine bliss and like this transcendence in in your mind that no amount of like quote unquote regular sexual experience can ever create in your psycho-emotional space. Uh, Tantric sex is so divinely healing for so many pieces like shame, like fear, like trauma, like unworthiness, like body hatred, like body disgust. When you step into tantric sex and let's say the two of you are playing with archetypes and your partner is looking at you as a goddess with eyes of pure love and pure devotion and he has the holding space for you to cry and shake and rage, it's, oh my God, like the words, you, I can't put in words what happens. It creates the level of somatic, hard, body, soul connection that transforms and infuses every fabric of your marriage, every fabric of your relationship. Um, me and my husband, we got so attuned with one another. Like even yesterday, I was doing some like, um, I was doing yoga practice in the morning for like 10 or 15 minutes. And as I was doing cat and cow, I had like this massive piece of trauma that came up. I've done a lot of trauma healing, uh, but healing from trauma is a dynamic process. You kind of go in spirals. So I had this big piece of trauma come up and I could feel a little like this ripples through my spine. And I knew because I'm so attuned to my needs, I'm so attuned to what I need physically and emotionally and energetically. My husband was making food for our son and I said, honey, I need you to come and hug me. And he's like, what's going on? What's going on? And I'm like, honey, I need you to come and hug me. And when he heard like this very, very grounded voice and deep voice, he knows that this is something that we have worked on in a very, very deep way. He knows that like, I need him. And he literally, I'm shaking. I'm like in a little ball on the mat. And he comes to me and he hugs me from back and just like lays his cheek on uh, back of my ribs. And I can literally feel like the, the boundaries of my system, the boundaries of my body. And he allows me to like cry and release and let go. And then like, wow, I can feel the love. I can literally feel like my heart just opening up for him. And I feel like this incredible desire to connect with him, right? Because he just held me. He just helped me to heal. He just helped me to release piece of trauma and come back to safety and come back to goodness. So when you and your partner like create this space for you deeply knowing what you need and him being there for you, knowing how to hold you, how to cradle you, how to support you, how to be present when big emotions arise, that is the essence of healing. That is the essence of togetherness. That is the essence of like being intimately tied in together that no amount of, you know, counseling or talk therapy will ever, ever create for you. So uh, I'm going to have a glass of water.
so this is a, this is a really really deep topic and subsequently I feel that it really offers it really offers like such exquisite invitation such exquisite doorway into you reclaiming the passion the love the chemistry when you have when you are in a place of the two of us have a, a healthy and safe sexual container for exploration when you are activating your pleasure healing your intimacy blocks and you have the skills the confidence and power to communicate with your partner communicate with your husband what you need and what you desire it's just creates like it heals everything from inside out and the two of you are together on the path of sexual connection on the path of sexual pleasure on the path of sexual togetherness deep down i know that no woman no man has ever stepped into the relationship saying yes right like six months down the road or 12 months down the road sex will die like that's it like when people get together they are so excited to be together they are so excited to like make love day and night right be together be naked play explore be curious and all of this your deep healing your pleasure activation learning the skills and truly initiating your partner to be on the same board with you is what is the process it is what is the pathway for reclaiming this heaven in bedroom heaven on earth inside of your relationship and inside of your marriage so what i have for you today gorgeous woman it's really special invitation what i have for you today is an invitation of a free consultation call where you and me hop on a call together and we'll get crystal clear what is exactly happening in your marriage what is exactly happening in your relationship so i will identify for you the exact blocks is it blocks in your body is there unprocessed sexual trauma are there pieces around maybe his pornography that are driving you mad like what is exactly happening on the level of you on the level of your partner on the level of the two of you and build for you a step-by-step -step map that will literally give you crystal clarity of what exactly you need to shift in your marriage or in your relationship to move from boredom uh boredom bedroom from bedroom pain and bedroom frustration into deep soul filling and loving intimacy with your partner and with your husband now on the call if it makes sense that we are a right fit and I can deeply, deeply support you through one of my programs. We can absolutely talk about what would it look like and how we can make it happen together. And subsequently, I want to make crystal clear that I don't do any hard sales. I don't do any pushy sales. First and foremost, I deeply care that the woman that come into my programs you stepping into one of my programs, you becoming my client, I can genuinely help you. I can genuinely support you. This is not about pushing something that is unsincere or it's not something that will genuinely, genuinely help you. But if I know deep down in my bones that what I do and how I work and the way I have developed my processes and programs will absolutely transform your marriage from inside out, we can 100% talk about how we can make it happen. Now, either way, from the consultation call, you're going to step out, whether we decide to work together or not, you're going to step out with a crystal clarity on what you need to shift, what you need to heal on the level of your body, on the level of your emotions, on the level of your nervous system, and within the context of your relationship to truly transform your bedroom and your connection with your partner from inside out i strongly believe as i said before like stepping into 2020 right stepping into the new decade of our lives 
It is time for us to get serious. It is time for us to say yes to ourselves, yes to our relationships, yes to our marriages, yes to what matters. Everyone is so like stressed out and exhausted and burned out and in pain and so disconnected from their body and like energetically depleted. But at the end of the day, when people get on a deathbed, when people get on the deathbed, they are not you know, uh, like running shows in their head around how much money they did not make or how many yoga practices they missed out or what parties they did not attend to. Most people, and then they had done studies on this, like most people have uh, this such a deep pain around how much love, how much sex they did not have with their partner how much, how many nights they were just lying there, you know, uh, 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 wounded and in pain and like feeling so heartbroken about being so disconnected from their partner. Studies after studies are showing that people at the end of their lives, they are like, oh my God, why was I so busy? Why did I not put my marriage and connection with my partner first. This is what matters. Making love and being connected and receiving a presence and a compliments and connection and like heartfelt devotion from your partner is what matters. This is what we came here to experience as humans, right? Connection, love and intimacy. So I'm really, really inviting you to step into this. I'm really inviting you to say yes to yourself. Because at the end of the day, you can watch this entire masterclass, which of course has been very, very powerful, and do nothing with it, right? And that knowledge, 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 acquiring information does nothing for your marriage. Or you can say enough is enough. Maybe I feel scared. Maybe I feel tender. Maybe I'm ashamed. Maybe I'm even ashamed to come to a call with Dagmar and tell her that, oh my God, I didn't have sex for so long and I feel, I feel, I feel really bad. But I'm here to tell you that first and foremost, there are a lot of women who are not having sex. There are a lot of couples who have sex two, three, four times a year. It's a norm. There are a lot of couples who didn't have sex for five years. And when you and I get on a consultation call, when you and I have the heart-to-heart -heart chat, I'm not here to shame you. I'm not here to judge you. I'm not here to criticize you. I've been through hell a lot in my life. I've been through hell a lot in my marriage. What I'm here for you to do is to really, with presence, with love, with compassion, with expertise, with divine guidance, to really hold you and show you what you can shift and heal and address and how to start approaching it so you can truly like reclaim your marriage and make your marriage juicy and loving and one of soulful connection. So thank you so much for being here with me today. It has been true pleasure and true delight to uh, be sharing these powerful secrets with you and this powerful, powerful framework for healing and transformation and bringing your marriage and your relationship into 2020 into a whole another level and a whole another experience. You are amazing. Feel free to ask me any question if you're watching on replay i will be uh chiming in next 24 to 48 hours and i'm super happy to answer or address anything that might be coming up for you that you want guidance around if you want to ask something privately feel free to send me a private message on messenger and i will uh be back with you within 24 hours you are amazing your pleasure matters your marriage matters your level of connection matters boom let's Make it happen.